स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so we did the validation for three airships which were available at that time or i should say the data for which was available at that time one of them is this us lta 138m and the other one is uh, sentinel 1000 which unfortunately did not really the program was cancelled midway sentinel 1000 was the airship which actually revived the airship technology after its downfall in the late 30s in the mid 80s early 90s it was this sentinel 1000 airship project which brought airship technology back into the focus but because of budget cuts this project was cancelled so a smaller version of this air uh, of this airship called as skyship 600 was made and then commercialized as 600b and sold so data for these two airships and from one more airship from a company called ulita unfortunately the company has gone bust so even if you try to search the website you will get no information i could not get even a picture of the airship to show today but i do have the data about that airship from jane's all the world aircraft so <clears throat> what i want you to do is don't worry about the numbers they don't matter look at the percentage difference look at the last column the last column showcases the percentage difference between what we estimated versus what is the actual data but for the fin weight everything is within 10% okay and in most cases we are underestimating because it is negative that's not good if you underestimate information it means there are certain factors which you are not being able to consider however theoreticians or academicians who don't have any practical experience on working on airships we really cannot do better than this because we don't know what is a factor to be put for additional weight of the envelope because of patches how do i do that how do i know now i know it because i have made so many airships so i can say okay if you are making a remotely controlled blimp of this size you know you must put so much factor now people are referring to our papers on remotely controlled air airship sizing because we have now data of our own but again our work is focused on particular type of envelope particular material so within 10% error except for the fin for the fin we are off by 21% that means the actual fin for sentinel 1000 was far heavier than what we predicted that means our assumption as i mentioned to you we had two formula for fin assumption one was Reimers formula for aircraft fin. The other one was area density method, but hope, hopelessly both of them were giving us wrong value. So now we know that our fin estimation is wrong, needs to be corrected. Okay. So this opens up one more area for someone to look into in more detail. What went wrong in our fin calculation? And maybe we can revisit this and go for better estimation but everywhere else we are within 10% so which is not bad for initial conceptual design this is the airship small airship now one more thing i should tell you smaller the airship better we were in the estimate so remember this airship is a small one you know here the errors were only half percent one and a half percent point six percent but again we are wrong in the fin by 16 percent okay. in this case we are overestimating so our formula are inappropriate for small airships because we overestimate by 16% they are inappropriate for large airships because we underestimate by 20% so we are grossly and hopelessly bad in our estimate of the fin weight okay so this is a medium airship us lta relative is a medium airship again we are overestimating by around 13% empty weight we were we were uh, wrong now empty weight under prediction is acceptable because actual airship may become heavier than what it needs to be because of certain structural modifications some damages repair work 
So, or they may say we want to make it statically heavy for some application. So, it is not a bad, still we are only over 13 percent. Now, we looked at some bigger airships which were either on paper like PD 300 and MD 900 are Russian airships which were on paper at that time and I think they are also on paper today, they have not been built. Similarly, Skyship 600 was a theoretical airship, it was built and A150 also was an airship. So, again we are off by around 10 to 12 percent in most cases, okay. fine. So, what we basically concluded is that our methodology is very simple, it can be easily put into a spreadsheet and you get error within around 10 percent. So, if you really want to be very particular, you can say, okay, whatever number you get, I will add 10 percent and that will be a realistic number. Let us look at some results that we got. So, uh, firstly to get the record straight, you should know what are the input parameters that were given, so that you get a mental idea about the requirements. So, the demo airship payload is not known, we are going to say how much can we get with 1000 meter cube envelope. Temperature will be ISA plus 15, the minimum altitudes, maximum altitudes and cruising altitudes are the same for both the airships. Cruising speed was chosen based on the engines available, that is why these odd numbers of 78 and 92, not, not 80 and 90, but 78, because we back calculated, okay, we have this engine available. With this engine, what is the kind of speed I am getting? That is the number. So, nobody told us fly at this speed. We said we will use this engine, it is available, it is uh, low cost, we will get so much speed range 100 kilometers and 500 kilometers, envelope L by D ratio, length diameter ratio 3.05 in one case and 4 in the other case, engine type was petrol and diesel and here we used uh, normal and supercharging. Okay. So, let us see, the payload weight for 1000 meter cube envelope volume came to 73.2 kg. So, this airship can barely take the pilot, it cannot take anything extra. But it is okay if you find a, not someone like me, but a lightweight person uh, who can manage within 73 kg. So, you can have airship flown by a pilot demonstrated, does not carry anything additional to as a payload. Okay. But uh, maximum speed was more than what we want anticipated in our initial calculation. Look at the fuel weight, you are traveling 100 kilometer with only 10 kilograms of fuel, that is a very big selling point, okay. And it is a, it is a large structure, it is almost a half a ton weight, empty weight, okay. But it travels within, within 10 kg, it goes 100 kilometers. For the bigger airship with one and a half tons payload capacity, it goes with around 220 kgs and it is 5 tons is the empty weight, okay. Now, let us look at some more details. So, here is the three view diagram of the demo airship that we got. You will notice that the maximum height is 11 meters, diameter of the envelope itself is around 9 meters, 8.78 meters and the length is 26.78 meters. What does it carry? Only one passenger and that is the pilot. So, what has gone wrong? Why do we have to have 27 meter length and you know 11 meter height just to carry pilot itself and the pilot? So, which requirement do you think has been the most stringent? Let me flash to you the requirements. altitude, that is right. Altitude is the killer because airships are basically meant to fly at low altitudes. As you make them fly at higher altitudes, they suffer a huge loss in the payload carrying capacity. Interestingly, the same airship, if I operate at sea level, I can carry four passengers plus the pilot, same airship. 
the airship packs cargo which carries only one and a half tons payload. If I bring it to sea level, it becomes a 30 seater aircraft. Okay. So, that is the problem. The problem is that the operating requirements are actually not suitable for airships because the altitude operation is very high. 